This milkshake, unfortunately, is not going to be bringing any boys to the yacht. Trust me. In fact, this one left one boy who didn't even quite make it to the yacht. The milkshake murderer refers to Nancy Kissel, who murdered her millionaire husband, Robert Kissel, by lacing his milkshake with sedatives, then bludgeoning him to death. What may have seemed to many like the dream life of an expat family proved to be quite different for the Kissel family. Was justice served? Let's find out. Robert Kissel, described as a New Jersey boy, grew up with his brother, who was also tragically murdered. They are actually known as the Kissels of Death. In 1987, Robert met Nancy Kishin, who was a restaurant manager in New York. They were in their mid-twenties and they met while on a club night vacation in the Caribbean. Friends described them as a handsome couple and that Nancy was a fun-loving person who seemed to love Robert dearly. With his natural knack for tracking baseball statistics, Rob started doing really well in Wall Street banking and was flying and by the mid-1990s, he was well into a career that would make him millions. However, Nancy is the one who seemed to reap the benefits and she clearly had a lot of pretty things. Though on the other hand, Robert did manage to keep her in check and they did have a few quarrels here and there. It wasn't always roses and ponies. In 1997, Robert finally got an invite to be in Hong Kong with his bosses at Goldman Sachs, wanting him to look after whatever that was going on with the Asian currencies at that time. So Robert and Nancy Kissel, along with their two children, a three-year-old and an infant, bid farewell to their family and friends and made their way to Asia. Once here, Robert became very consumed with work and naturally, Nancy grew lonely despite living in luxurious Parkview apartment. I mean, it is Asia, so it might have, must have been culturally alien for her. However, she did not let anyone in on her loneliness. Instead, she chose to play tennis, started a little business, volunteered and had friends. She also still described a private life with Robert as being very passionate. In the year 2000, Robert was won over by Merrill Lynch, making him its top man in Southeast Asia. This obviously meant twice the work in hours. However, behind closed doors, it seems like trouble was brewing. According to Nancy, Robert relied heavily on his cocaine habit and had frequent temper tantrums. He was physically abusive and even forced her to display forms of intimacy that she was not too keen on. He hit her and even flew into a rage when her due date conflicted with his overseas work trip as she was expecting their third child, a son. He also went back and forth with the credit cards which meant he clearly wanted to keep a watch on her spending habits too. Then in 2003, SARS broke out. As a precaution, Nancy along with the children flew back to the States while Rob stayed on for the job. Even then, Nancy and the kids wanted luxury. They moved up to Vermont and ordered an expensive home theatre system. That was when Nancy came to meet Michael Del Priore, who sold and installed the system. The two hit it off and had very few little intimate affairs before Nancy decided to move back to Hong Kong with the kids as soon as the threat of SARS was over. She kept in touch with Mike and Robert started suspecting something. He hired a private investigator back in the States who managed to find evidence of the affair, though he could not find any images or pictures. Due to this, Robert started becoming more abusive with Nancy and she even believed that Robert himself was involved in affairs with the same gender when he travelled around Asia. She got herself a new mobile phone suspecting that he may be recording her. Little did she know that he had installed another spyware program in the family computers. This is what would later prove Nancy's searches for drugs. She had gotten hold of five prescriptions, Rofinol, Stilnox and a few other sedatives and sleeping pills. Robert did mention to his friend that his single malt scotch that he very fondly had did not taste the same and was worried that his wife had been putting something in it. He did not analyze it further for he was actually guilty about thinking such way about his wife. On November 2, 2003, a neighbor named Andrew Tenzer came over with his seven-year-old daughter for a play date with the Kissel's kids. He asked for some water but was greeted with some milkshake served to both him and Robert by the little girls. Andrew left soon after and fell into a deep sleep at home, woke up for some dinner, ate a huge amount of food, then slept through again, even soiling himself. Even his wife's slaps could not wake him. The next day, he said he felt like he had amnesia. November 6, 2003, the Hong Kong police arrived at the Kissel apartment after Robert's boss lodged a report about a missing employee. People he was close to knew he was having some marital issues. 
Police questioned Nancy Kissel about an earlier case she had reported about Robert missing after they had a squabble and how she had not seen him and she failed to mention that they actually had a storeroom in another building. That very evening, the police interviewed maintenance men at the apartment complex and learned that Nancy Kinsel had called the management office the day before to have a very heavy rug moved to her storeroom. The workers who moved the rug told the police that it was unusually heavy and that it had taken four of them to move it. The police immediately requested a search warrant to enter the Kinsel's storeroom. The smell of death greeted them and they found Robert wrapped in tight plastic and head covered in black trash bag. Two hours after finding Robert Kissel's body, police arrested Nancy Kissel on November 7, 2003. Soon, she was charged with the murder of her husband. Police pathologists examined Robert Kissel's body and determined that he had been struck five times in the head with a blunt instrument. Tests revealed the presence of six prescription medications in Kissel's stomachs, including the sedative Rofinol, better known as the date rape drug. Five of these drugs had been prescribed to Nancy Kissel by two different doctors in the months before her husband's death. Robert left behind 18 million in inheritance to his wife and children. On the 1st of September 2005, she was sentenced to life in prison. I believe there was another indictment after that, but she still remains behind bars. Her children are now in safe with Robert's sister Jane in Seattle. Nancy is not in touch with them and says she does not regret killing her husband. Was justice served?